My name is Thomas Vale, or at least it was. I'm a photographer. I had it all. Wife, Allison, friends, a career. And in one moment, it was all taken away. All because of a single photograph. I have it. They want it. And they will do anything to get the negative. I am keeping this diary as proof that these events are real. I know they are. They have to be. Months have passed since I've heard a familiar voice speak my name. Since I've seen recognition in someone's eyes. I continue to hold out hope in spite of what I'm living through. That whoever has done this to me might have overlooked something. A small piece of my life forgotten, tucked away in a distant corner. I've secured a job working as a messenger for Shimera Photo Works. Shimera is a large photo syndicator. Some years ago, I sent a dozen photographs to them for sale to syndication. I'm hoping that somewhere, buried deep within their archives, I might find some trace of my past. 9.40? Hell, he could have been there and back by now. Oh, he's not still dipping into that street mine chick over in Charlestown. At least she'll keep quiet about it. Oh, hey. Mirror image. 47th and Tower. Yesterday. Hey, did you page me with this number? You get one page on that puppy and one page only. 911. That means it's me. That means get the lard out and get to a telephone. Nobody else has your pager number. Hey, Joey. Yeah? I need something from the stacks. Okay. okay. No, bring those boxes over here. Yeah. No. Hey, Marco. You gotta run. Heartland's publishing. On the way. Pronto. On the counter where I left it. No, I need the visible one. this things really went to hell when you left that pretty wife of yours sitting in that restaurant while you went to the men's room for a cigarette we want i want to help you tom <laughs> i'll bet then you'd profit by that wager i really do want to help you well why don't you start by telling me who you are meet me tonight at the museum of science fourth floor 11 p.m. I'll make sure it's worth your while. 
while. I forgot the part about make sure you come alone. Given the state of your life, it hardly seemed necessary. Okay, that's the, uh... That's the Museum of Science. Put your pad away, Mr. Vale. Fourth floor, 11 p.m. will turn out to be an educational experience for you. He is looking at you, kid. What do you want? I told you. I'm here to help you. Why? I'm going to help you because you're going to help me. Not likely. A question worth contemplating. Should we pull the plug? For the last 10 years, I've been working for the people that you've been trying so hard to find. <laughs> and just who might that be? I'm sure I don't need to tell you that my employers are a powerful, well-organized group. They have little tolerance for people who come between them and their objectives. Yeah. And what are those objectives? When I began my association with them, I was under the impression that their objectives were the same as mine. That no longer seems to be the case. Oh, you don't get invited to the company retreats much anymore. Once a member of the club, always a member. I continue to do my job, but you might say that I have something of an attitude problem. I'm going to take them down, Mr. Vale. Piece by piece if I have to, but I am going to destroy them. Well, great. Then why all this? Why not just walk away, turn them in? To who? To the authorities. You still don't understand, do you? They are the authorities. Why tell me? The man I work for is Richard Grace. He is one of the highest ranking members of the organization. And you're just volunteering his name? For a purpose. I told you, Tom, I'm here to help you. If you help me, what do you want? I want you to kill Richard Grace. Open it. The man you are looking at is Richard Grace. The face is probably not familiar, though he should be of some importance to you. Why is that? Go to the county video archives. Give the card to the person behind the counter. You'll be handed a videotape. I have no doubt you will find it interesting.
sure you're all aware that I've called this session to consider a matter of erasure. You've all had a chance to review this case. I have strongly recommended his erasure to the board, and I expect that you will green light this project. It is of personal interest to me. support in this matter. As of now, Thomas J. Vale of Evanston, Illinois is no longer. I hope you enjoyed the video. What's your point? What did you think that was going to accomplish? I just thought you might be interested in putting a face to the man who was responsible for your erasure. A face isn't what I need. I also thought that once you knew more about Richard Grace, it would make your decision to kill him that much easier. I haven't made that decision. You will. You know, on the other hand, you may have just pointed me towards a man who holds the answers to my questions. A man who does me more good alive than dead. You presume quite a bit, Mr. Vale. Richard Grace executes. He does not initiate. <laughs> You're telling me that the man who approved my erasure doesn't know the reasons why. He's a man who thrives on power on knowing that he can control or ruin others. In short, he's a sadist, well suited for his position. If given the opportunity to know why, he would not be interested. Although in your case, he did have something personal at stake.
Richard Grace had a home, a life, maybe even a wife who loved him. What she knows and doesn't know about her husband's job might make no difference at all. If someone had told me a few months ago that I would be sitting here watching the man who took my life and debating whether or not I could take his life, I wouldn't have believed it. But now, watching the routine, the normalcy, who knows? The difficult truth is, despite my rage and my anger, killing Richard Grace would not change my life in any way. special you were looking for? No, uh, looking for a man, actually. A friend of mine, I thought I saw him going to that back room just before I came in. He's got gray hair, about 5'11", wearing a dark gray suit. I... And you saw him come in here? Yeah, he, he talked to you for a second, and then he went in the back. I'm sorry, sir, you must be mistaken. Thank you. church on fourth they say confession is good for the soul and if i don't come beginning to understand why they consider your reconditioning and, and elimination a priority. You are, to coin a phrase, a pain in the ass. Thank you. You 
came extremely close to putting our arrangement in jeopardy. We don't have an arrangement. You do seem to possess an exaggerated sense of self-importance, Mr. Vale. Well, let's just say I've had encouragement. Touché. Fortunately, you did not do enough damage to prevent us from proceeding with our plans. Sit down, Mr. Vale. You'll leave when I want you to leave. It's all so easy for you people, isn't it? What's that? Just eliminating who or what stands in your way. Well, I'm not you. thought the most recent photographs would have been sufficient incentive what's his connection to my wife your wife Allison how did you get those photographs what are they doing to you Richard Grace leaves town tomorrow morning he'll be gone for almost a month his wife left today ahead of him so he will be alone for the next 24 hours it would be best for you to kill him tonight Sorry, I've made other plans. better uh, marriage of crew to material. The code is 47223. I've marked the position of the alarm beams. Mrs. Grace is visiting her sons at the private military academy where they are... Blue shirt, blue eyes. Mr. Grace usually arrives home by... Keep your hero happy and attractive. Yeah, I always say, no, our man is autobiographical. I just didn't look that good. <laughs> if you do this right, the man can go to bed... Are they still looking for you? Have you found uh, out who you are? You know what? No, I never was looking for who I was, really. I was just trying to stop people from telling me not to be who I was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when people tell me they're looking for themselves, I have a negative reaction. We won't go there. In some strange way, killing... Well, what I think made this series special to, the, to all the people that became Nowhere Men fans really seriously was the fact that what this series gave us was what we, what we had in common with the series as viewers was what we lost other series it's what we have and that the stories become accessible to us our common experience with no man no man was with thomas Vail was the things we lose you know and the sense of loss you know bonded us and uh, and that frustration and, and the fright or but might. he always knew how he felt on the crew right right absolutely yeah, I mean, I think when you don't feel a need to understand the show, which I feel this way about everything, whether it's Shakespeare or opera or anything, mm -hmm. when you just look at it, let it be what it is to you. Right. You know, I mean, part of the problem of dissecting a show because you're doing commentaries and you're doing interviews is it really sounds like you sat down and intellectualized all this stuff, which isn't really true. This show was spun out of a generic feeling. Mm -hmm. And then to have fun, I mean, on some level, it's the Twilight Zone. You know, let's have fun, let's do things, <clears throat> let's surprise people, let's be cool, you know. Um, and I think at times people say, but what's it about? What's going on? Who cares? Go for the ride. It's the journey. It is. Yeah. That's tough for a lot of people, though, Peter. Yes. It's like, I'll only get in the car if I know where we're going and how we're going there. Great interior, great. Another, I mean, I realized looking back on this series uh, that I clearly have this thing for houses and interiors. And I, and, and I don't think I was fully conscious of that other than I always used to say to you, I'll make the houses like 
cool and moody and but again this has such richness right you know whether it's small old new it's mom and dad those are the people who came in the picture frame when That's you right. bought it at the store <laughs> i just realized you're supposed to take those out <laughs> Using these houses in Portland was great. People would say, oh, you, you, know, you don't have to pay us. We'd be happy to do this. Wow. You know, it's very different in Los Angeles. Oh, and by and naturally, we did pay them, but they were just, because, because they didn't have a series there, it was. Right, people weren't frustrated no. and burnt out. And, yeah. and it gave us great luxury to use the wonderful homes. Yeah, this beautiful house. Well, again, like I said, Portland had the versatility of it's middle class neighborhoods, it's up uptown mm -hmm. sections. It's But look how you're talking about your interiors, how much the set plays in this. Not a word has been said for the last couple of months. Right. It's all been about where he is. Right. I hate when that happens. She keeps showing up in the it strangest like places. What is her story? I mean, Allison ended up taking on a fascinating sort of cloud about her. But you and I know she was the one behind the whole thing. We just <laughs> right. don't want to tell anyone. Of course, she's a woman, you know. Mm -hmm. It's her fault. It's her fault. I didn't do it. Yeah, it is amazing how long this sequence has run mm -hmm. without a word of dialogue. I remember at one point, even starting in the pilot with that 600 millimeter lens shot, you know, how everyone re resisted not That's cutting right. into it earlier. But this show was a lot about being glued to Bruce and what's he thinking, right. what's he feeling, and I'm feeling it, or I know, as you said with the crew, I know how it feels. That's right. Put it down. Look, I, I don't need very little encouragement to use this. Just put it down. There's no money in the house. I don't want your money. Dear God, it's you. Didn't think I'd make it this far, did you? How did you? Look, if, you, if you're going to kill me, I'd at least like time to be able to leave a note for my family. I'd give you the opportunity you never gave me. Go to hell. Go to hell, Mr. Grace. He's monologuing. <laughs> He's making up for all those silences we just had. Right. Sit down. Looks as though the shoe is on the other foot. So. He wore that jacket for 25 episodes. Why? Did it, did it, was it auctioned on eBay or something? I think it's back in D.C. now, next to Archie Bunker's chair. Why is it so important for you to get the negative? Yeah, I keep thinking as I'm watching this scene that part of me, if I found the archetypal sort of, who is never one person, but guy who is the omniscient them, mm -hmm. Do it, I just want to put the bullet through his head, or would I want to have this conversation with him? But I guess there's a temptation to say, why is the world the way it is? Why do things happen? I think so. How does it feel to know someone else is in control? To know someone else can make the decision as to whether you live or die? It wasn't personal. <laughs> I love that. Thank God I wrote this one. I really like that line. <laughs> we just screwed over your whole life. Don't take it yeah, personally. Yeah, don't take it personally. Why don't you think about your wife and your sons? And I want you to think about my finger on this trigger. Mm. This takes so little, doesn't it? Just the slightest amount of pressure. You never see those boys grow up. You never hear anybody say, I love you. You never get to say it to you. You know, it's who are in this sequence, too, no medium shots. You know, they're right. very wide and then bang. No present. Future. Listen, shut up! Uh, we go to a medium shot. <laughs> a pose reminiscent of the end of the pilot. Well, you created me, you son of a bitch. 
The man standing here with his finger on the trigger is your creation. And the rest of your life is up to me. All I have to do, I just have to make one small, simple decision. A man like you is probably wondering why I would even hesitate. I mean, it's just a life, isn't it? There's so many others. I mean, why should a person hesitate? About taking one here and there. At the end of the day, it's kind of like turning off a light switch! Then again, that would make me you. That's something I could never live with. So I'd like you to answer some questions. Oh, man, he was getting so close. <laughs> Thanks. What took him so long? What are you doing here? Oh, man. Great, it's like a moment out of an old 1930s Falcon movie with George Sanders. The unseen shooter. I love that. <laughs> Tom sure had to regain consciousness a lot in Nowhere Man. He was so sore. And I don't think never once did he regain consciousness and say, where am I? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> we avoided that. No, he that. expected not to know where he was. Right. It was part of his... He'd be disappointed if he woke up and knew where he was. I mean, also, whoever did this robbed him of the joy of doing it himself. Ben Stark Hotel. Salem, Colorado. KXRT Radio 530 News. There was a murder tonight in the posh Salem district of the city. The victim, 55-year-old Richard Grace, was reportedly home sleeping when an intruder broke into his house and shot him three times at close range. Richard Grace, a successful security industries analyst, was perhaps best known for his... I remember this lunch night. How did you, how did you find the balance on the show between day and night work? Was it taxing in particularly one no. way or another? No, because you may not remember, but you would change things for me. So. Right. You wrote to the I was actually cooperative. You actually, unlike, yeah. Unlike the rumors. No, you had so many people in L.A. that you could argue with that you didn't need to argue <laughs> with me. <laughs> no doubt about that. But there's also no doubt that it's just most powerful at night. Right. It's got a lot of Cinematic. impact. You know, the Portland crew is used to shooting in dark, you know, darker times. They have less light than we do because of cloud conditions and everything else and because of rain. And they can shoot for us and capture the rain in the lens or hide it. Right. You know, depending upon where they put their lights. I guess once you're in the Pacific and Northwest. They're, they're, really, they're really great in the Pacific Northwest as a crew in terms of working at night because they're so fast compared to Hollywood crews. Well, it sounds from what, a little bit of what you're saying that there was the kind of this is fun, this is a cool show, we're glad we're on it, and everyone was sort of hustling and having Absolutely. a they good were all time, very at proud least that way. They were all very proud of it. And uh, their families would come by all the time, uh, see what dad was doing, what mom was doing. You know, it was, it was a big, it was a great a weird show you're working on, ma. It's going to pull up the floor again. Yeah. Yep. A lot of answers, by, clearly in my imagination, <laughs> or yours, or someone's, that uh, yours, that the it's answers. Your architecture. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure at some point, the script said it's hidden somewhere. And we talked, and you said, "What if it's you know?" In some ways, there's that what we see on film is a Peter, Larry, Bruce fusion yes. that might not have existed the way That's it right. was without any one of us. Police, open up. All right. Uh, I'll be right there. That was its uh, success, actually. I think so. Yeah. And of course, that's also the risk you take when it starts with one person and, and the committee, quote, committee comes mm -hmm. in. It, it, it usually stands a chance to be less. I think this was a combination where it always became more. You're looking for somebody. <sighs> well, uh... I think in episodic general, generally speaking, episodic television, if you can put a show on the road, afford to do it, which we were able to. It's it's almost always better. Right. Do you mind if it doesn't happen much nowadays. No, the economy's pulling it all back to Hollywood. Well do I have a choice? And a lot of stage work. A lot of stage work. We'd be building all of this. Right. 
and you know a lot of like command centers, control centers, bullpens mm -hmm. where the cast, the, the ensemble cast gather. Right. You know, four days out of seven. Never know who's been there before. There's nothing. I mean, 24 has taken over in this decade what we were doing then. Right. In terms of one strong lead, running for us. Oh, that's it. I just you're just looking for somebody. Yeah, I mean, it's another thing we talked about. Uh, you know, the weather difficulties and Bruce's difficulty of being in every scene and every shot, but. Really, uh, there's also the fact that when you don't have, you know, shows that have the command center, the control center, the the, the pit, the bullpen, right. they the writers are always writing towards that. And many times when the scripts go out to production, scenes that you put elsewhere, they're saying, "Can you write this That's back right. in the office, That's back right. in the bull?" And this show had not one regular recurring. No. We're going back to show, which just made, which was even a bigger, you know, onus on your back. Who was your appointment with, the dry cleaner? I can explain that. Yeah, you will. Hanson, oh. yeah, I got him. 322. Come on, let's go! Take the roof. Peterson, get to the lobby. Got it. He's on the fire escape. Yeah, I must say, you know, I've said often the Palm Talk arc, arc was for the network, but as I watch the show, and all the production values are as good, and Bruce is as wonderful as he's always is, but the episodes are not nearly as interesting because there's not, they're not about as much. I'm sure to the audience that wanted answers and wanted a right. sort of paranoid, who are they, they're after you. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they may have liked this. You know, again, I think we did a good job given what we were doing, but. A lot of water in Portland, a lot of bridges. Yes, yeah, a lot of bridges. That's what I mean about being on location. You can, a walk talk becomes something very special. So, right. You know, instead of in the office. Especially when you're walking with legs like that, it's very <laughs> special. I was just told to bring you here. By whom? It's just a job, sir. Good luck. It's just a job. Oh, By it's whom? just a job, sir. Yeah. Wait a minute. Uh -huh. Aha. <laughs> we, we, we did have fun with this kind of stuff. Yeah. From the pilot, you established this in the pilot. I tried to get a print of The Fugitive, but on such short notice. What do you want? Got the you know, we were we were <laughs> voice casting this role until he finally showed up episodes later, and I think it was a good job because it was such an important. You know, the voice had to right. to resonate and stay with you. And if I'm happy, Mr. Vale, you'll be happy. That's my mother used to say that to me. <laughs> Don't you see? We're both free and clear now. Richard Grace is dead, and once they've run your fingerprints and blood type. No one in the organization will suspect me. Well, how nice for you. You may have forgotten one thing, however. How is this supposed to help me? Grace is a casualty of war. It happens. You struck first. They know what a loose cannon you are. Think about it. Can they want you any more than they already do? Listen, the stakes are different now. So you had to utilize in, the, in a scene like this an existing location almost like a soundstage. That's right. And put up psychs. And, right. So you had to actually find your temporary sound stages. That's right. This is a, clearly a very... Right. You didn't scout this location to look like this. You made it look like this. We knew we had the space for it. That's right. Right. The organization doesn't know that. It was a particularly hard scene for him because he acted into the light the whole time. You know, for an actor. He, he had a lot of that. He had, he had very few scenes opposite people. Right, right. Well, yeah, you Bruce know. had to do a lot of internalization right. and a lot right. of... A really tough acting job, it really was. Yep. <laughs> you 
Yeah, I mean, even in shows, when I think about at the end of um, Jimmy Whitmore shows something about her, he's being interrogated. They're on the other side, but you're still just, he can't see them. Right. So even when there are people there, he's often talking to no one, which I find myself doing often. Coming only six hours after the murder of Richard Grace, the police have arrested Mr. Grace's 32-year-old gardener, Manuel Lopez. Police detective Roger Coleman told reporters that they had found personal items. I always say, when you can't find a guy, get the gardener. <laughs> I think that's the philosophy we should, as crime fighters, people should live by. There was no butler. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Not still my blood, my fingerprints on the gun. My people know that, Mr. Vale. The police... You know, again, that one thing that does stay in the show, even though this is the Palm Top arc and it's a bit of a departure, is the feeling that you don't know them. They're out there. Mm -hmm. You won't know them. You might as well be talking into a light. Call it a show of good faith, Tom. I had them, and I returned them. Why? Tit for tat. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Flip flop, crisscross. A helping hand deserves another. Well, you know, <laughs> one sort of comedian say if you go to England and you wake those people up at two in the morning, they talk just like we do. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it that some dialogue just sounds more important when it's being spoken with a British accent? Authority. Yeah, I know. I should just take all my scripts and have British people do it. It would sound so smart. Why give it to me? Because I make good on my word. I told you that I'd help you. So this is it. He's about to kick off the arc into the next few episodes. Uh, it's just a little black book. Partners. In a way. Perhaps. <laughs> What you learn from your filing cabinet will help you work your way to the top of the organization. Why don't you just draw me a straight line right through the front door? Oh, it gives me too much pleasure to think of the damage you can do to them on your way there. Makes you think I'll even use it. Uh, you'll use it, Tom. Could just leave this here, walk away, and never look back. Could you? Little tones of spider web there coming mm -hmm. through. And so we uh, fade to black and white. 